We are And this is the UPLB CFNR channel. I would like to welcome everybody, our panelists, our uh, participants. Uh, welcome to the Forestry Development Center's webinar series of 2020 Forest Policy Ethos. So this event is being held in celebration of FBC's 42nd anniversary. So today's uh, webinar topic is uh, Adaptive Forest and Environmental Policies in Response to COVID-19 Pandemic. So to formally start our activity, um, I would like to call on our director, Dr. Priscilla Dolon, to give the welcome remarks. Good morning, everyone. First of all, on behalf of the staff of the Forestry mm -hmm. Development Center, I would like to welcome you all to the 42nd year Foundation Day of FDC and to the second Forest Policy Talks the FPC Webinar Series 2020. It has been a tradition that every year, during our foundation, our anniversary, we conduct a policy forum. But as this year is different due to the pandemic that we are currently facing, we decided to make use of an online webinar via Zoom and live streaming live streaming to pursue our commitment. Hence, we are all here today to discuss the policy issues and concerns in Philippine forestry, environment, and natural resources. As a brief background, the Forestry Development Center was established at the College of Forestry and Natural Resources, UPLD, by law through the issuance of Presidential Decree 1559 in 1978 but we became operational only in January 1981. FDC was mandated to conduct policy researches and policy advocacy through policy forums, seminars, and conferences in forestry, environment, and natural resources, and to help develop an effective machinery for policy formulation and implementation. FDC also reviewed, proposed, and recommends policies based on empirical research, research results and analysis. The center is funded by the national government through regular occupations. And to carry out its mandate, FDC seeks collaborative work and partnership with other agents, government agencies, private sectors, and funding institutions locally and internationally. So far, we have conducted several researches with funding support from government agencies, private and funding institutions. Policy fora, seminars, and conferences were conducted with, in partnership with some sponsors, private institutions, and government agencies. For today, in celebration of our 42nd anniversary and the second of the Forest Policy Ethos, the webinar, the FPC webinar series 2020, which we have started this July, we are grateful to have with us Dr. Rex Victor Cruz as our speaker. We are proud to say that Dr. Rex Cruz, or Rex, also served as one of our directors from 1994 to 2000. <coughs> We are happy to share with you that during his term with FDC, several researches and policy fora were conducted by FDC. Even up to now, he continuously provides technical assistance and support to FDC. Dr. Lex, thank you very much, Bob. And also to our discussions for the day, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Tony Daniel, Mayor Dr. Hemihildo M. Velasco, and uh, Mr. Peter Daniel G. Praginal, in place of uh, Mayor Nora Diaz. Welcome to FTC and thank you for your time to share with us your expertise and experiences in land use planning. And to our guests and participants from different sectors, from government agencies, private institutions, the local government units, 
the Academ, yung members po ng Philippine Forestry Education Network, the Society of Filipino Foresters, yung lalo na po yung mga retired foresters natin na very active pa rin in service. And doon po sa my colleagues at the College of Forestry and Natural Resources, UPLB, welcome to FDC webinar series 2020 and hopefully we can have a fruitful discussion this morning. Again, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you po, Director Dolo. So, sana sa inyong welcome remarks. So, before we proceed, I would like to recognize the presence of Director Neria and Dean in our activity for today. So, uh, um, to proceed, okay, so uh, since uh, Dean Willie P. Abasolo is not yet here, uh, we'll proceed with the program. So, I'll be formally introducing today's resource speaker. So before that, I would like uh, to mention first the house rules for today's activity. So kindly, I will read it to you. So first, if you wish to speak, uh, you may click the raise hand button. So we will acknowledge you later at the Q&A. And then only un unmute your microphone if you are given the signal to speak. Uh, next, uh, questions may be asked via the question and answer tab of Zoom or via the comment section in FB Live. So currently, we're broadcasting through the Forestry Development Center, the FNR UPL page in Facebook. So when you're asking your question, uh, please indicate your unit, organization, and to whom you are addressing the question. Okay, next, uh, this whole webinar is being recorded for documentation purposes. So we're just informing you. And then after the webinar, uh, you will be redirected to the post-evaluation Google form. So we will uh, we may collect your assessment, uh, and then e-certificates will be distributed after. So it's clear, okay? So to formally uh, introduce our today's resource person, um, our resource person for today is a full professor at the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, College of Forestry and Natural Resources. Uh, he obtained his bachelor and master of degrees in forestry at UPLB and his doctoral degree in watershed management at University of Arizona in the USA. Uh, in the past, uh, our resource speaker has served as the FDC director, uh, the College of Forestry and Natural Resources dean, and the UPLB chancellor. Currently, he serves as a member of the National Pool of Technical Experts of the Climate Change Commission, People's Survival Fund Board, and Board of Directors of the Asia-Pacific Forestry Network for Sustainable Forest Management and Rehabilitation, or APFNet. Also, he is one of the authors of the second, third, and fourth IPCC assessment reports. In recognition of his exemplary contribution to science and technology, he became a member of the National Academy of Science and Technology in 2019. So without further ado, for today's uh, resource person and activity, I would like to introduce to you our resource person, uh, Dr. Rex Victor Cruz. Sir. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, Raymond, thank you very much for the uh, you, uh, nice introduction. And um, you know, before I start, I'd like to uh, uh, thank the Forestry Development Center for inviting me to the, to this forum. You know, in celebration of their 42nd uh, anniversary. And as uh, Dr. Presi Dolom said a while ago, I was part of FDC. You know, for uh, six years, way back in the 1990s, and that was a very fruitful experience for me. You know, not only in terms of uh, not only in terms of the outputs that we produced, you know, during that time, but also as uh, as a learning experience for me as an administrator. That was my first major administration job. You know, uh, since I finished my uh, doctoral degree. So you know, thank you very much, uh, FDC. You know, we, which I consider as my uh, uh, family still up to now. Um, and I would like to greet also the distinguished uh, members of the panel this morning, uh, Mayor uh, Hermi uh, uh, 
uh, Velasco of uh, San Gabriel La Union, a very close friend, a very close uh, partner and collaborator in integrated uh, natural resources management, even uh, in uh, uh, reducing uh, uh, the risks and vulnerabilities related to climate change. And also uh, Dr. Uh, Tony Danio of RBCO, also a very close uh, friend and uh, uh, partner, <coughs> partner in uh, river basin management. And then, of course, uh, we have uh, our representative from uh, DHSUD, uh, ENP uh, Peter Fraginal, you know, uh, representing uh, Ms. Nora Diaz. And uh, I think I didn't miss, I, I haven't missed anyone. Of course, uh, greetings to Director uh, Neria, uh, Neria Andin, who is also uh, with us in this forum. So, anyway. When, uh, when I was approached by FDC to speak about uh, COVID-19, I said, you know, what will I talk about? I'm not a medical expert. Uh, but then when I uh, thought about it, I said, well, wait a minute, you know. Uh, my long-term advocacy, which is on uh, integrated land use uh, planning and development using the watershed as the physical framework, you know, is something that is very, very related to uh, to the topic on uh, on COVID-19, and so I said, yes, okay, I can, you know, I can uh, I can do that. I can speak on, you know, I can speak on. Uh, I I can speak on uh, integrated area land use planning and development uh, to and its contribution in uh, minimizing uh, in minimizing uh, public health risks and more. <clears throat> And uh, you know, when I the more I <clears throat> the more I thought about it, excuse me, the more I thought about it, the more uh, it dawned on me, you know, that uh, uh, the way we plan and the way we use our land resources is very much uh, interlinked with the public health risks that we are experiencing, including COVID uh, COVID nineteen. All right, let me just, uh, okay. All right, so, yeah, let me, let me begin with, the, with the, a note, you know, with a slide on the consequences of ecosystem degradation, okay? A ecosystem degradation is, uh, is uh, uh, you know, is something that we don't like because it has a lot of uh, serious consequences that include uh, soil and fertility loss, water quality degradation, impaired hydrology, land, aquatic, marine productivity loss, loss of livelihoods, poverty, income loss. And then there, there are also loss of natural habitats, wildlife migration, displacement, disruption of food chain. And then, you know, this uh, bunch of uh, uh, human risks or risks to human life, you know, that includes pests and diseases, public health risks you know carbon uh, carbon emission which is uh, something that uh, you know makes us all very much concerned these days and the uh, ecosystem degradation and its consequences are uh, aggravated compounded by climate change and I think you know this has been something this is an ongoing themes of many uh, many discourse on uh, climate change you know and uh, its impacts on the natural and human systems and then, of course, uh, you know, my focus for this morning is actually, you know, trying to relate the way we use our land with the outbreak of pests and diseases with the increasing public health risk and disaster risks. Now, if we look at COVID-19, you know, I do some, uh, some research on the recent uh, studies, you know, related to COVID and how, you know, they are uh, transmitted, you know, from... Uh, what they're saying, you know, from uh, from bats to human being, you know, you can see here in this, uh, you can see here in this slide, you know, that from uh, from uh, from the bats, okay, from the bats, uh, they the the virus can be transmitted, you know, uh, directly. For instance, by people consuming food, you know, and that talks about you know the trade of animals, you know, can be. Uh, can be the reason for this. And then, uh, of course, there is also an intermediate host. May, may mga sinasabi sila na may mga, may mga, 
may mga other animals, you know, that gets the virus from the bat and then from that animal, that is how they are transferred to, to human beings. But see, the, this issue is about, you know, is about the wildlife driven out of its natural habitats to seek source of food closer to human settlements due to deforestation and forest degradation. So in a way, deforestation and forest degradation um, uh, shorten the distance, you know, between between wildlife and human beings because wildlife are driven out of its natural habitats they tend to seek you know shelter and food closer to human settlement so lumalapit no the distance between wildlife and human beings and wildlife being potential vectors of uh, vectors of uh, uh, diseases like covid-19 you know uh, are getting closer to people and then the other the other you know, the other way is that human settlements are growing closer to natural habitats due to unregulated urbanization and land conversion. So, tao naman ang lumalapit. No? This time, people are the ones uh, getting closer to where the wildlife are located. You know? And uh, this is something also that, that uh, creates you know, a, a, uh, a less safe distance between humans and, and wildlife. And so, you know, we can see from here, from this slide, that it really matters, you know, it really matters how we plan the use of our land, either for settlements or for urbanization or for agriculture, you know, as we do in land conversion, converting of natural lands to agricultural lands. And these are all the reason why all the more, you know, we look at the way we use our land, the way we develop our lands as something that we need to do, you know, very carefully so that we can ensure that the wildlife remains where they are you know and people remains at a you know at a safe distance away from where they are okay and this is you know this is an issue about you know a lot about uh, land use uh, management and development so if you look at land ecosystem degradation there are you know there are four major uh, factors that causes ecosystem degradation that includes pollution illegal trade introduction of exotics and then lastly, habitat degradation and loss. But if you look at habitat degradation and loss, you know, this is uh, primarily caused by deforestation and forest degradation. But of course, degradation of the forest is related to agricultural expansion. It's related to land conversion to other uses other than agriculture. Okay? And then, of course, agriculture expansion are driven by population growth and by uh, uh, by urban expansion and of course urban expansion is an outcome of increased economic activities related to increasing population growth and uh, you know all those uh, I don't want to to detail this uh, this uh, description or the visualization of uh, the anatomy of uh, ecosystem degradation but you know as you can see as you can see a lot can be said about the impacts of the way we use our lands on ecosystem degradation and that is why i said again you know i'm saying again land use management and development you know is something that uh, we need to take very seriously because it can have very serious consequence on our ecosystems and you know factor that in a factor in the impacts of climate change you know, that can compound our problems. Okay? All right. So, um, what, do, what do we need to do? We need to restore natural habitats. You know, we need to control uh, uh, pollution and address illegal trade and also the introduction of um, exotics. And this is where we do, you know, forest protection and restoration, regulate land conversion, regulate agricultural expansion, you know, and of course, plan carefully urban expansion and so on. So these are things, you know, we need to do and a lot has to do again with the way we use our land. So why then, you know, why then is it important for us to use landscape-based comprehensive land use planning, okay? And I look at this as the cure for ecosystem degradation because a lot again as I said a lot of ecosystem degradation is related to the way we use our land gone are the days yes those years are gone now you know that uh, illegal illegal forest activities are the main causes meaning to say illegal logging illegal timber you know uh, timber harvesting and forest harvesting are the major causes of forest degradation and deforestation but even at that time you know even at that time if you look at the way the issue has been studied by uh, uh, 
by a lot of experts, you know, even illegal logging and illegal <clears throat> forest harvesting are just, is just half of the problem. And half of the problem is caused really by agricultural expansion. And agricultural expansion is an issue of land use planning and development. Okay? So if we look at, you know, if we look at a landscape unit, whether it's a watershed or, a, you know, other type of uh, landscape unit that you want to define or use, you know, you can see that in a landscape, okay, uh, these different ecosystems are in interconnected from the forest to the uh, agroecosystems that include agroforestry, agricultural, grassland, you know, riverine, riparian, and then lakes and wetlands all the way to mangrove and coastal and marine ecosystems. These are all interconnected. And therefore, you know, the way we use our lands, okay, the way we use our land resources, okay, is something that we need to be able to relate to the way we need to preserve and conserve the integrity of our ecosystems. You know? Because when ecosystems are degraded, then that's where the problem starts. You know, that's where we see water degradation, soil degradation, land productivity loss, you know, outbreak of pests and diseases, and so on. Okay? So, uh, you know, we, we, we always look at these ecosystems are as interconnected and uh, you know we don't have to belabor this point okay ecosystems are interconnected first and foremost by the movement of people no yung mobility ng mga tao and what they do inside the landscape and the different ecosystems inside it okay so what we do in one ecosystems will affect you know will have a domino effect a series of uh, cascading impacts you know on other ecosystems Okay, from ridge to the coastal and marine ecosystems. All right, so, but, you know, this has been, this has been well uh, recognized already, you know, internationally by the UN, you know. If you look at the sustainable development goals, okay, they, this is something that they're saying, all of these are interconnected, you know. Lahat ng sustainable development goals are interconnected. And what it, this is saying is that you want a sustainable future, look at sustainable development uh, development goals are as interconnected. You cannot pursue one sustainable development goal apart from the pursuit of the other goals. Magkakadoksong yan. And so, you know, that is also the way we should look at, you know, the way we develop our land resources and the way we develop our watersheds, our landscape, ridge to reef, you know, landscape units. So, uh, what we're, you know, what we want to see is um, we want you know, we want, for instance, the CLUPs of the different LGUs, you know, to be uh, integrated, to be an integrated. And I think this is the idea now of uh, the, the, the latest DILG and HLURB guidelines, you know, for CLUP to be a truly integrative, in, you know, integrating framework for the development of other sectoral plans. That includes FLUP, Tourism Plan, Urban Development Plan, LDRRMP, LCCAP, ADP, ADSDPP, you know, protected area management plan, and so, uh, so you know, and so on and so forth. Other plans uh, that are under uh, mandated uh, for CLUP to develop. So, but you know, in doing so, we have to recognize, and this is rightly recognized as well by the revised guidelines of HLURB. You know, uh, using the watershed as a physical framework. You know, one municipio, one LGU you know, can fall within just one watershed and that makes it easier, a lot easier actually to, to do the planning and analysis, no? But the reality is that uh, one, CLU, one LGU may be situated in two watersheds, two watersheds that they share with other LGUs, okay? And uh, the PDP, you know, the, the Provincial Development Plan should be something that is, an aggregation, integration of the different CLUPs. But then again, if you look at the prov one province, one province can be situated in just one watershed, you know, which again simplifies planning and analysis. But in reality, okay, one province is located in two or more watersheds that they share with other provinces. And that complicates, you know, it complicates the way we, we analyze problems and we analyze priorities and then do the planning, you know, identification of uh, uh, different strategies and development uh, goals, okay. And 
the aggregation of the different provincial development plans, you know, should constitute the regional development plans, okay? But if we look at one region again, you know, uh, one region can be just in one watershed, but it can also be in two or more watersheds, okay? And that it shares with other regions. And again, that complicates, you know, the issue. But see, the point that I'm making here, the point that I'm making here is that if we want you know, for all of these development plans to be integrated, you know, to be integrated, there has to be one, you know, one physical framework that will actually create that opportunity for integration. Integration that really matters, you know, uh, to our key concerns, which is basically, ano ba dalawang concerns natin sa, sa development planning, land use and development planning? What are the two major concerns? The two major concerns are to protect the integrity of the natural systems that includes ecosystems that include land resources, water and soil and meet our various economic development goals. Okay, so those are the two issues. But you have to be able to marry that using a logic framework, a logical physical framework and that, you know, that is rightly so adapted by HLURB in their recent guidelines, you know, using the watershed unit okay so basically you know what we uh, basically what we want to um, you know what we want to do using the watershed you know is something like this okay we do watershed profiling we do watershed zoning you know and identify the key issues and concerns you know we understand what the needs are in a watershed to be able to uh, to be able to promote the sustainability of that watershed okay now, after having done that, after having done that, we can now input, you know, we can now take as input to uh, comprehensive land use planning, for instance, uh, watershed zoning, okay? Watershed zoning is something that can be used as a framework by CLUPs. Now, what this is saying is that in one LGU, if one LGU is located in watershed A, and watershed A has been zoned, Comprehensive land use plan or zoning in an LGU inside that watershed should be consistent with the zoning of the watershed. And so are the zoning of other LGUs located in the same watershed. That way, you know, that way, the comprehensive land use plan of those LGUs inside watershed A will ensure that the watershed is protected, sustained over long term, okay, while at the same time trying to achieve also their socio-economic development goals. So that is the, that is the idea. So in, in other words, okay, we do watershed analysis, planning, zoning, etc. to ensure protection of our ecosystems, protection of soil, of water, of biodiversity. And then we do CLUP, Okay, balancing the protection of ecosystems with <clears throat> promoting the sustainable achievement of sustainable economic development goals. So uh, basically, that's you know in, in general that's what we that's what we are saying. We have done this. We are doing this already with uh, with General Lakar. General Lakar is actually located in three major watersheds: Umirai Watershed, uh, Kaliwa Kanan. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Kaliwa Watershed and Agus Watershed, okay? And these three watersheds, okay, ang ginawa namin dito, we did the zoning for these three watersheds and then use the zoning of these three major watersheds as the basis for zoning of the LGU of General Lakar. That way, you know, when we do that, CLUP, you know, create, you know, has that assurance that the watershed is going to be protected, okay, no matter what they want to do in, what they want to do in their, in their uh, local government unit, okay. So, what are the over, overarching policy directions? Because, I mean, well, what are the legal basis already that we have? We have plenty, you know, we have plenty to uh, to say about uh, existing policy framework that promotes uh, landscape-based, you know, type of integrated area-based type of land use planning. <coughs> and this includes, 
Ang bisyo natin, 2040, Chapter 20, Constitution of 1987, NEDA, PFPP, you know, their main concern is to protect ecological integrity. Okay? So that means, you know, that gives, you know, that gives really a premium to uh, the way we protect ecosystems in whatever we want to do with our development. No? It requires integrated systems approach. Okay? <clears throat> to promote ecological integrity, there is no way but to do integrated ecosystem approaches to development. Okay? Otherwise, you know, otherwise, if we just consider ecosystems as part of the considerations of development planning, <coughs> then our ecosystem is bound to take the sacrifices needed, you know, uh, for development. And that's exactly what is happening, right? No. The cost of development is always, you know, most of it is always, uh, always accrued to the natural systems, the ecosystems, okay? in the name of achieving development targets, okay? But, you know, it requires harmony of ecological and economic goals, plans and programs. And then we, we do have integrated local land use planning and development policies, as I was mentioning a while ago a number of times already, HLURB's revised CLUP <coughs> guidelines, no? And then the local government units also, they have their own uh, local government uh, code, you know, provides for LGs as co-managers of natural natural resources, okay? So this requires rich reef approach, and that is why I was happy to see, you know, the first time the revised guidelines of HLURB came out, you know, that reef to reach approach is one of their major guiding principles, okay? And uh, the watershed as a landscape, as, you know, and watershed as, as a planning unit, you know, as also uh, articulated in the HLURB guidelines, okay? And then, you know, there are policies on adapting a holistic, comprehensive, integrated, and proactive DRR, okay? And we see that again in the HLURB guideline, in the um, NFSCC, SNAP, you know, etc. So these are all well-articulated ecosystem-based approach to DRR and climate change and climate change adaptation. Now, if we, you know, if we... If we are saying that DRR, the disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation, if we are saying that this is ecosystem based, we cannot, you know, we cannot say that, well, yeah, you, DRR and CCA, you use ecosystem based. But when we do development planning, we're not going to use ecosystem based. Or we're not going to use a shed and landscape unit, okay? We do, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll use other framework, physical framework. It's not going to work. Okay, that's not going to work. And uh, I, I think that's something that, you know, we still have to address, okay, change that mindset, okay, because those mindsets are still uh, among us, you know, in many different forms and uh, places. And then holistic multiple use, sustainable management of natural resources in given spatial unit, you know, <clears throat> we can, you know, we can look at the Philippine Agenda 21, we can look at the uh, DNR, uh, Administrative Order uh, 1, Series of 1999, the NRDAO 2017-02, the uh, Sustainable Integrated Air Development, NIPAS Act, AFMAS, AFDZ. You know, all of these are, all of these are, requiring, are requiring integrated framework and most of them watershed ecosystem framework. But, uh, um, you know, and these are all because, no, these are all because there is the need to harmonize the protection and production uses of watersheds and watersheds and ecosystems. Okay. Now, again, you know, talking about the 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 protection and the harmonization of protection and production uses of watersheds and ecosystems, this is in effect saying, you know, that land resources inside watersheds and ecosystems need to be harmonized. No, need to be harmonized. So that's just uh, what uh, we're saying there. And then, of course, uh, integrated management, development of water resources, okay? And the water code, you know, uh, DPWH department order, okay, uh, 99, 1-99, uh, uh, RBCO, river basin master plans, these are all, you know, these are all uh, subscribing to the integrated management of water resources along with other natural resources. Again, 
and you see here okay if we want to manage you know if we want to have an integrated management of water resources we have to manage the other resources with it that includes land and everything else that we do on land okay so whether we talk about integrated management of water of ecosystems of watershed we are you know we are in effect trying to promote integrated management of everything and then strong collaboration in development and ecological protection most policies uh, previously mentioned highlight the need for collaboration of their sectors okay <clears throat> in all of those that i you know that i that i presented in the previous slides okay strong collaboration of stakeholders you know is a common theme okay and that means that the, the that that means that if we want really to have an integrated land use planning and development it has to engage all major stakeholders meaning all agencies all lgus you know and other stakeholders must be in it okay the clup the LGU cannot develop the CLUP and then all other agencies are disinterested in the CLUP. They don't even bother to look at CLUP as the framework for setting their development targets in LGUs. I mean, that will not work, okay? That will not work. The physical framework of watershed or landscape, you know, for land use planning entails all stakeholders all agencies with lgus and you know private sector okay buying into the integrated uh integrated uh, land use plan okay and then pursuit of sustainable development at the local national level okay integrated holistic planning balanced social economic development multi-stakeholder participation basically you know that's what we saw Okay, but the gaps, you know, there are gaps that we need to address. One is absence of clear guidelines for using watershed approach, okay? Um, and we can, you know, there are observable difficulties of LGUs in application to CLUP and DRR and CCA. I just had uh, one, uh, one doctoral uh, student who, who did his dissertation on... Um, who did his dissertation on the uh, governance systems in applying a watershed-based or ridge-to-reef approach to comprehensive land use planning. And it was evident from the data that uh, he collected that <clears throat> a lot of LGUs, and these are mostly in the Mindoro, you know, Mindoro Islands, uh, and a lot of them, or I think Mimaropa, uh, and a lot of them are, uh, a lot of the LGUs, you know, are evidently having difficulty appreciating you know how to use the watershed approach okay in developing or updating their CLUPs and in applying it to DRR and CCA so I think we need to revisit the guidelines you know to make it more uh, explicit okay to make it more explicit and then uh, tailor fit also existing guidelines on I, IWRM guidelines for watershed management in the Philippines and other existing references for local development uh, for local development planning. No? Ang, ang, ang problema kasi talaga is ano eh, kinakailangan may merong ano eh, I mean it has to be a, a how to you know step by step that is explicitly you know telling us how to use the reach to reef approach. Uh, and uh, as I review yung existing guidelines, including yung HLURB guidelines, you know, uh, hindi pa maliwanag talaga eh, you know, based on what I explained na, uh, you know, that we need to apply the watershed approach, okay, or landscape approach in the way that, uh, that is truly representing, you know, the very concept of, uh, of those approaches. And then inadequate expertise, again, in the study of our students, in the, in, in the most LGUs have one no, or really more technically trained personnel, okay? And then, of course, sa DNR side, no, most centros lack enough uh, trained personnel as well, you know, to be able to, to handle this. Kung meron man, konti la, isa lang yan, ano? And then, we re, you know, we need to launch massive capacity building program and then engage the local government academy and academy, you know, to, to actually pound on this, you know, 
how do we really apply ridge to reef approach or watershed approach or ecosystem approach to comprehensive land use planning you know? and we need to professionalize uh, technical LGU offices you know so that uh, the expertise technical expertise can be beefed up in support of comprehensive land use planning you know and then uh, uh, we need to increase the allocation to hire additional personnel for planning. Now, kung planning ay mahalaga, dapat, you know, it has, you know, it has to be, it has to manifest in terms of uh, investing a lot on developing uh, personal expertise for planning. And then inadequate knowledge and appreciation of local executives and officers of using the watershed approach and what a watershed is. You know? And I'm glad uh, Mayor Hermi is uh, with us. You know, he is already uh, very much, uh, very much uh, into watershed, you know, and how to use the watershed for climate change adaptation, you know, and how to use it for updating his uh, master plan, uh, CLUP, you know, but we need to do this, you know, uh, to many other, okay, local executives, and then uh, massive IEC is required, you know. And then, of course, absence of national land use planning framework is also not helping okay and uh, hopefully we can pass you know something like the national land use act okay that can uh, uh, advance uh, integrated planning and then absence of robust mechanisms for coordinated and integrated local sectorial local sectorial development plans so this is still a reality you know uh, i've been working for instance with the manila bay master plan development uh, we're still doing it and the one of our difficulties really is how to um, master the uh, different national government agencies, you know, uh, into a cohesive unit such that they will have a unified development, you know, strategies and targets for, for Manila Bay and the Manila Bay Basin area, okay? Otherwise, it's going to be very, very difficult really to push for integrated uh, integrated uh, uh, planning, you know, if the national government agencies do not have a strong culture of interagency uh, inter collaboration. And then absence of unifying framework for integration of national local sectorial plans, okay? So we need to improve the harmony and synergy of PDP, uh, PDP plans and targets. And then limited knowledge and information on watershed. I think this is a, you know, this is something that we need to address. Okay, kulang pa yung mga data natin. A lot of our watersheds don't have, you know, good data sets that can be used for planning purposes. And so this is probably one of the priority, you know, that DNR and the HSUD, you know, can pursue how to, uh, you know, how to make sure that um, most of the watersheds that we have have their own uh, data sets you know that is necessary that are needed for planning okay and then we need to do long-term watershed ecosystem research and monitoring you know uh, DNR has started their own uh, mo uh, long-term monitoring for watershed and we still need to do this you know concertedly uh, with the academe with uh, uh, with FMB with uh, BMB with EMB you know we need to be able to put our resources together to advance the buildup of uh, empirical data sets you know that we can use that we need for planning and then of course pervasive LGU boundary conflicts this is not really without you know solutions to planning you know we have dealt with this in most of our planning exercise okay this is something that will not hinder us from uh, doing a good planning but uh, you know if something can be done to once and for all address this boundary conflict, resolve all these boundary conflicts, the better. No? Pero as I said, you know, this is not really, uh, you know, this is not really a, uh, 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 what, do you, what do we call this, it's not really a, 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 a total hindrance that we cannot address, okay? And then absence of monitoring and accountability for impacts of land uses on water and natural resources, okay? So uh, I think we need to, uh, you know, we need to also have these uh, uh, mechanisms for accountability of impacts of land uses on water. Okay, whether that is LGU, national government agencies, or private sector, you know, or, uh, yeah, but there has to be a system of, uh, a system of, uh, of uh, 
uh, accountability, especially you know, kung may mga plano that has been uh, that is being implemented. Okay. Otherwise, you know, if there is no oversight on the implementation of uh, land use plan sa Limbawa, you know, then you know it doesn't really matter whether we do a good plan or a bad plan, no? Kasi hindi naman mino monitor eh, you know, what the impacts are or consequences are of uh, implementing the, uh, that land use plans. Okay? So walang, ano, walang motivation to do that. So we need to institutionalize a system for monitoring and determining accountability for impacts of land uses. And then, uh, yeah, uh, land use, land conversion is very pervasive. You know, we need to really address that. One of the major, one of the leading causes now of degradation of natural habitats, land use conversion. We have to be, you know, we have to be uh, aware of that already. And then absence of true convergence of LGUs, uh, of NGAs in LGUs, okay. So in summary, I'm done, my time is up, you know. Okay, when we do watershed, you know, in, in, in what, we're, what we're trying to say here is that, you know, watershed management, in watershed management planning, these are what we do. We do situational analysis of the watershed. We do assessment of problems, opportunities, issues, concerns. We do uh, vision, mission, goal setting, and target setting. We do land capability zoning. We do land use suitability assessment. You know, we ID and design yung mga uh, POPs, yung project uh, uh, programs, policies, uh, programs, projects, and activities. You know, and then uh, we do action and investment planning. Now, uh, when, when we have done that, you know, when we have done that, we can use basically, you know, we can use basically the different outputs, you know, for preparing comprehensive land use planning. And that is what we, you know, that is what we're doing with General Nakar. You know, it's just unfortunate that, uh, that Mayor uh, Ezi Rosol is not available, you know, uh, to be with us, okay, to, uh, to say something about uh, what we're doing on the General Nakar, okay. So, uh, you know, uh, then we can do the comprehensive land use uh, zoning. And then, of course, the zoning ordinance will come out of that. The zoning ordinance will then be, you know, uh, will then be uh, consistent with the watershed zoning. Okay. And then, you know, based on this, this is where we should, you know, we should be able to develop uh, the different uh, development plans that are mandated for, um, for LGUs. Okay. So basically, this is you know how we want to uh, to how we want to do it, and this is how we're doing it. So General Nakar, okay, and this is you know this will ensure these are the outcomes that we foresee: sustainability of water resources and other ecosystem services, okay, uh, disaster risk reduction, uh, critical habitats uh, protected from human impacts, and then optimize land productivity, reduce land degradation, synergistic development of uplands, lowlands, coastal, and marine areas, horizontal integration amongst LGUs, provinces, and regions, integrated programs to address common problems. And, uh, okay, I cannot read that because uh, this is in the way. Okay, concurrent attainment of sectoral development goals and optimize use of resources for development so i think this is my last slide i know i know you have a lot of questions but uh, i'll you know i'll uh, i'll end up here thank you very much sorry i thank overshoot uh, for six minutes thank you sir for that uh, very informative uh, presentation so um, let's proceed uh, to the next uh, part of the program. So, yes, um, for the next part, um, I'll be calling on uh, a panel of uh, people who will react and uh, also present their ideas on uh, Sir Rex's uh, presentation. Okay, so for the next speaker, okay, um, our next speaker has more than 20 years of experience uh, working in the academe, government, private, and NGO sectors combined. He has worked in various types of institutions like the Department of Trade and Industry, private thrift banking, ILO-funded and VAP projects, economic and business research and publications at the private think tank, and taught business and tourism subjects in tertiary education. Uh, he's also an MBA graduate with postgraduate units in education and urban and regional planning 
and DBA. He is a board pastor in both environmental planning and real estate appraisal. He is currently working as a housing and home site regulation officer at the Environmental and Land Use Policies Division of the Environmental Land Use and Urban Planning and Development Bureau of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. He's a passionate bibliophile, educator, and environmental planner. So without uh, further ado, I'd uh, like to present to you our next speaker to react to Sir Rex's uh, presentation. Uh, Sir Peter Daniel Gonzalez Frahina. Sir, welcome. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, Sir Raymond, and good morning to Dr. Uh, Cruz for that wonderful presentation. So I was tasked uh, to react to the presentation of Dr. Cruz. Uh, in general, I could concur perhaps 99% because I think mostly his reference was our 2013 and 2014 CLUP guidebooks. So um, in that case, I think we are in the same uh, foot or concern regarding the current situation regarding forest land use planning and also watershed planning. Now, uh, I just have a little introduction and maybe a point of clarification. Uh, so the guidebooks were made by the formerly Housing Land Use Regulatory Urban uh, Land Use Regulatory Board, which has now been uh, merged or uh, with a HADC or Housing Urban Development Coordinating Council to form the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. This is under our RA 11201, which was signed last year by our president. So one of our uh, primary uh, goal is to be the national government entity responsible for the man management of housing, human settlements, and urban development. So we are the sole and main planning and policy making, regulatory program coordination and performance monitoring entity for all housing, human settlement, and urban development concerns, primarily focusing on the access to and the affordability of basic human needs, of which I think the resources under our forest and other ecosystems will fall under. So we are tasked to develop and adapt a national strategy to immediately address the provision of adequate and affordable housing to all Filipinos and ensure the alignment of all the policies programs and projects of all our attached agencies to facilitate uh, this objective. Now, I'd just like to go to the, maybe we can cut to the concerns and gaps presented by uh, Dr. Cruz, specifically the integration of watershed uh, management in our land use planning. So in our uh, current iteration of the guidelines or the latest, which was actually finished in the years 2013-2014. Uh, as you can say, it's called comprehensive. So under volume two of our uh, guidebook, we have their uh, ecosystems analysis under which uh, climate change and disaster risk reduction, as well as forest ecosystem, coastal planning, and biodiversity are considered into the formulation of the draft CLUP of the LGUs. Now, in addition to that, and to further strengthen and to streamline or to uh, mainstream the use of our CLP guidebooks, the former HLURB, which is now part of the, or was uh, merged with HADSI to form the DHSUD, has come up with a, a tip up or technical planning uh, programs. So, under this, we have like 23 topics or syllabi that covers all areas of planning or that should be taken into consideration in the forming of the CLUP of the LGUs. So I can tell everyone now that our first and perhaps most important topic or syllabus would be the uh, integrated ecosystems management. So under that, we have taken into consideration all the aspects and the factors taken into consideration in ecosystems management. Now, regarding the gap uh, mentioned by 
uh, Dr. Cruz regarding the watershed planning, actually one of our requirements for the LGUs is to provide us with their maps and also uh, long, together with this are the watershed maps. Now I do believe these watershed maps are available from our partner national government agencies. So specifically, uh, if I could mention the DNR. So the DNR along with the other department and uh, national government agencies uh, have a long standing relationship and collaboration with our agency, formerly HLURB and now DHSUD, in coming up with uh, very useful data in a comprehensive analysis of the uh, land CLUP of the LGUs. So I think, although there's no specific topic for the watershed per se, it is already integrated and mainstream into the other topics. Like, for example, in our uh, topic 12 or syllabus number 12, we have, uh, it will be under the forest uh, management topic. So uh, just to share with you, the, it's called Integrating Forest Land Use into the CLUP. So just to give you an overview, uh, we concur that sustainable forest management addresses forest degradation and for deforestation while also increasing direct benefits to people and the environment. So to sustainably management the forest or continuously make available goods and services derived from it, it is our belief that it's a joint responsibility of the national and local governments. As such, LGUs are required to undertake an analysis of the forest ecosystems, which include naturally the watershed and integrate forest land uses and appropriate development controls into the comprehensive land use plans. So in this topic, we introduce processes and techniques for analyzing the forest ecosystems and its goods and services, as well as streamlined and simplified forest land use integration into the CLUP. So there is a clear emphasis on gaining a better appreciation and understanding on the LGU's role in forest conservation, development, management, and governance. So, we have designed this to provide the LGUs and the technical working groups an overview of the policies, legal, institutional context, and framework of forest land use planning and management as an integral part of the CLUP. So uh, this sort of capacity building is to ensure that the new and emerging CLUPs are contextualized into a more holistic or integrated ecosystems management planning where the area covered cuts across all types of land, whether it be protected area, agricultural, mineral, and forest lands within the territorial jurisdiction of the city or municipality. So I think this addresses the concern of the presentation of Dr. Cruz regarding the comprehensiveness of the planning uh, as far as watershed is concerned. I'd also like to share that, and we also agree that uh, it is not just a concern of one LGU because a watershed can be lo located or situated in more than just one LGU. So we could address that by, we have in our agency uh, providing technical assistance to LGU. So one strategy is to do clustering wherein, uh, uh, closely related LGUs or uh, spatially uh, connected LGUs could uh, be pulled and uh, provided technical assistance uh, together or in sync so that they could take into consideration their adjacent uh, LGU neighbors. So, so far, uh, those are some of the concerns or uh, issues that I'd like to clarify and also share with all the panelists and the participants in this uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Peter, for your valuable inputs. Okay, so sana po ay naliwanagan yung mga participants natin. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, let's move on to the next speaker. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, so to introduce the next speaker, um, our next speaker is uh, 
the executive director of the River Basin Control Office of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, uh, or RBCO. RBCO is a mandated agency to formulate an integrated river basin development plan for the country's river basin. Uh, our next speaker is an agricultural engineer with a master's degree in watershed management and PhD in land and water resources. Uh, prior to this current assignment, uh, he has served as an assistant director of the Ecosystem Research and Development Bureau. And he was a two-term president of Forest and Natural Resources Research Society of the Philippines, or Forest Bee. Um, as a researcher, he has an instructive work on watershed hydrology of different vegetation types. And he's also privileged to practice his profession as a hydrologist watershed specialist of various projects in uh, Laos, PDR, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and Nepal, to name a few. So without, so without further ado, I'd like to welcome and introduce to you our next uh, re, uh, speaker, Dr. Um, Antonio Daniel. Sir. Yeah. Uh, good morning uh, to everyone. Uh, may I begin by uh, congratulating FDC on their second 42nd anniversary. Uh, thank you too for inviting me as discussants on this excellent uh, paper of Dr. X. Vector Cruz. The paper commenced by reminding us you know, on the consequences of ecosystem degradation due to anthropogenic activities and confounded by climate change. The thesis of the paper is that the cure of ecosystem degradation is a landscape-based comprehensive land use planning. The paper expounded that ecosystems are interconnected, therefore problems and solutions are also interconnected. The landscape-based planning approach is expected to facilitate attainment of, of interconnected sustainable development goals and the attainment of interconnected city, provincial, regional development goals. Supporting policy directions were discussed and it was noted that the commonality of the policies is the requirement of watershed-based approach. The paper also enumerated numerous gaps to be hurdled for it to be successful. Firstly, I noticed that the paper used comprehensive and integrated. I'm not sure if they mean the same, but those in 1991 and borrow 1991 differentiate comprehensive from integrated river basin planning. The goal of comprehensive basin planning is optimal development of resources. And it puts uh, little uh, emphasis on prom promoting uh, human welfare than integrated uh, river basin planning. That's why to lessen confusion, the integrated approach was used to refer to river basin planning with stronger intention of managing river basin for human welfare. So river basin integrated development approaches then are defined as approaches that simultaneously advanced multiple benefits across the three dimensions of sustainable development, social, environmental, and uh, economic. Secondly, except for the rationale, I find discussion on land use planning and health risk, particularly in pandemic period, needing uh, elaborations. And in fact, in the summary, I, it seems the health risk was missed out as one of the outcome in the land use uh, planning. Indeed, the interconnectivity of SDG goals and LGU goals necessitates an integrated planning framework as expounded in the paper to be, for it to be achieved. The SDGs holistically address the economic, social, and environmental dimensions of sustainable development and are designed to be pursued 
in combination rather than one at a time. Uh, UNEP 2015 shows that policies designed to address a limited set of goals, one of the three dimensions of sustainable development, can impede progress for the other dimensions and have a negative impact on human well-being uh, overall. In its adoption, it sends out a clear message that restoring and maintaining the health of the natural base is necessary condition for eradicating poverty and sustaining economic progress for all. I would say that river basins have been used for development planning and management since 1930s and promoted by various international agencies. It was applied in many countries with an eye of promoting integrated area development. In fact, the then NASIAD, the National Council for Integrated Area Development in the 1970s, applied it as a mechanism for influencing LGUs to address national concerns at local levels and envision to address more directly equity objectives by give, giving high priority to the development of less endowed regions of the country. At the early stage, emphasis was on the delineation of ecological units, the Bicol River Basin Development Projects, the Cotabato Agusan River Basin Projects are two of the examples, but slowly it shifted to political boundaries. The pattern was attributed to convenience, the increased autonomy of LGUs, and I think the most important is the absence of administrative machinery that governs ecological units. In fact, Dr. Cruz also supported it with, uh, by citing a result of the study relative into the use of watershed approach. But despite difficulties, you know, river basin and integrated area development remains to be attractive and the concept remains a viable option in dealing with multidimensional problems of poverty and ecosystem uh, degradations. The RBCO was created mainly to avoid sectoral planning and development of river basins through applications of integrated river basin development and management framework. Again, the paper discuss uh, the framework that involves the from the visioning to plan formulation. Poor results of river basin planning or integrated area development are mainly on issues of implementation and administration. Because implementation is typically complex and challenging. It needs to be supported by a range of mechanisms to ensure that the principles of integration are put into practice in the entire planning cycle. Let me summarize the policy directions and gaps as discussed into key areas where support is needed to address the challenges facing the adoption of integrated uh, approach. Number one is strengthening institutions in governance. Uh, the paper cited convergence, coordinations, and the like. So the major challenge facing integration is that planning institutions and processes still work along sectoral lines and no one institutions has the mandate and resources to pull all actors together. Integrated planning is also challenged by an effective coordination mechanism, uh, resources for cross-disciplinary work and skills and incentives for working together. Enhance monitoring and evaluation, monitoring, accountability. Our m and &E system is designed for social and economic development, and it needs to be tailored to be capable to integrated approach and the SDGs. It needs further support to fully develop the approaches and assessment methods required to establish programs and policy evaluations to measure progress of the SDGs. Third is capacity development. 
no, capacity constraints limit integrated planning at all stages of the planning cycle across all levels of the government and stakeholders. And strengthening evidence-based empirically backed policy options or research. The complexity of integrated planning with its many drivers and actors makes, makes evidence-based policy making increasingly uh, desirable. And lastly, a supportive budgeting and financial system. Ensuring integrated planning goes hand in hand with budgeting so that funds are available for implementations and prog programs are prioritized in the face of budget constraints rather than to just become a wish kulang. In summary, the paper holds on to the principle that ecosystem sustainability is key to social and economic development and can only be secured to an integrated planning approach. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh -huh. Sir Tony, for, uh, for discussing those things. Hey, so for our last discussion, um, before I introduce to you, uh, Sir Tony, thank you very much. Okay, so for the next discussion, um, our next discussion is a municipal mayor, uh, two term actually, and by trade is a medical doctor, general surgeon. He's also a firm, former municipal health officer of uh, his municipality and a member of the Lonoy Baroro Integrated Watershed Management Project. Uh, his work experiences uh, in um, is uh, being a volunteer of uh, Kapwa Kumahalko during the Mount Minat Pinatubo eruption in 1990 and a uh, late flash flood in 1991. He's also a volunteer at the Philippine Humanitarian Contingent to Iraq and has uh, served as a medical staff international SOS in the Western Pacific region. Uh, he's also applied his trade as an assistant professor at the University of Northern Philippine College of Medicine in Vigan City, Sur. So without further ado, uh, for our last discussion, um, I would like to call on uh, Dr. Mayor Henmigildo um, Velasco. Sir, good morning po. Yes, Mayor? Off. Video. You can start your video, sir. Okay. Uh, wala pa yung video? Uh, okay na? Sure. Okay na? Okay, allow okay, yung sa video, uh, Raymond. Okay, sir. Uh, anyway. Okay, uh, okay. So, good morning to everyone and thank you to the Forestry Development Center for this invitation to join this Forestry Policy Forum ETOX. Congratulations on your second, 42nd Foundation Anniversary. Good morning again, sir, Dr. Rex Victor Cruz. I always anticipate your presentations and lectures when you are in La Union with the team. And definitely, I will not miss this important and timely topic. Ecosystems, which humans are part of, as you have presented, is a complexity of many factors, activities that we do that eventually affects our lives and survival. Thank you, Dr. Cruz, for that complexity you discuss, the interrelationships and interconnectedness somehow for me is an eye-opener alarm bell that needs to be heard or look at especially we at the local government units we as the human population bear the brunt of the negative effects of mismanaged environments and ecosystems but on the other hand understand that action should start at the ground with us truly the interrelationships as applied to the sdgs cannot be separated and narrowing down the task to where everyone should be starting, which is the development goals of its LGU, municipality cities, to the province, to the region, and to the entire archipelago, is a rational starting point. We know that water supports all forms of life, including low-life forms that brings diseases and other intermediate hosts. And in mankind's history, where water is, the rivers, the seas, and the oceans, tribes, people, and culture and everything, the life pool. I think that may be the reason for the watershed playing a pivotal role in all the schema of, of, of all these things, development of communities. Your slides on the overarching policy direction is an excellent 
guide to know about where we already are. I just wonder, sir, if our policymakers, including the local executives, really spend time learning all these uh, explanations, concepts, and framework. Most, I would say, will just delegate this to their MPDCs or EMS if available. A very important slide is the need for strong collaboration of various sectors, stakeholders, NGAs, and LGUs that you have discussed. An observation, however, that I have personal experience is getting the important actors to the, ta to the table, the mayors, Sangunian, the governors, the legislative bodies. The works that your team, the CFNR in the Barora Watershed Management, almost five years now, have laid down, produced science-based data and key informant informations, which are now our basis for actions and directions to take. I hope, sir, that uh, what you're doing in General Nakar would uh, eventually be done in our Baroro uh, manage, uh, Integrated uh, Management and Protection Program. Referring to your modular modules of fragmentation, timeline, and the pace of our actions here, there's so much to do be done pronto. That brings me to your GAPS implementation and the required section that spells many of the things we have to do from launching massive capability building, enhancing guidelines, everything to be institutionalized. There are well-studied recommendations, and thank you for that. In our experience with you and the CF and our team, your accomplishments, the data, the interviews, are all academically driven, have been very helpful at various levels of our community structure, from the farmers to the technic technicians to the policy makers. For me, I appreciate your, ad your, uh, your recommendations and continually address its implementation with whatever resources we presently have in our locality. Sustaining the participation of the people to apply what you have imparted with the end view of attaining a better environment for more generations is as complex as all the interrelationships we are discussing. But with the academic self, the Filipino-based data, the works and applications, and the urgency, all of us need to understand, to act now, and start with ourselves, and joining together, maybe with that we can, we can contribute fairly to humanity's survival. With that, I would like to share uh, a little bit of uh, the things that we are doing here in San Gabriel. Okay, next. So, ayaw gumalaw. Yan. San Gabriel is the largest municipality in La Union. In terms of land area, it's an indigenous cultural community with 15 barangays and this population, about 19,000. We have many good practices that turn out to become best practices and been recognized elsewhere. But uh, the Let's Go Basic being the flagship program that was started by former Mayor Divine uh, encapsulates all the things that we do to, to, for a sustainable, clean, green, and safe municipality. Uh, I presented this Let's Go Basic program during the NREM last uh, November uh, 2019. Part of this uh, Let's Go Basic program is the strategies that we do in the clean and safe and green. But I would like just to show the group that in the clean strategy, we were already starting with the prevention of environment-related diseases. And one good practice that we have done here is the vector habitat mapping. Being a medical doctor uh, had uh, given me some tools uh, that uh, are very uh, important to, to our prevention of diseases. So we have a, a larval, larval examination of the different areas in our community. And this vector habitat mapping has been very significant in our uh, policy making because knowing where the anopheles, which is the vector for dengue, are will keep us uh, awake and in our toes during the rainy season. And through the years, because of this uh, vector mapping, we now understand that uh, other diseases associated with the Anopheles mosquito, uh, Aedes mosquito, uh, like Sikungunya, uh, Zika, and other uh, diseases can be can be traced to their presence. And uh, the 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 lecture just presented by Dr. Cruz uh, really shows the 
invasion of uh, the human population, the habitats into areas of our insects and uh, possible vectors that may principally become disease, uh, disease vectors. Next is the greening program. I would just like to emphasize here the Fruit for Life program being one of our practice that have been uh, receiving uh, some uh, smiles because we are giving uh, the seedlings for particular subgroups of the population to make them understand and uh, sustain the life of these uh, particular uh, seedlings until they grow. Partly is the Lonoi Watershed Development Program. The San Gabriel in Lonoi, Barangay Lonoi, contributes 75% of the headwaters that supplies four municipalities in La Union. Through the years and through the help of the UP Los Baños CF, CFNR, the Lonoi Baroro Bar Bar Integrated Water Management Program have been continuously uh, active in the community and not only in our locality but it includes now the Ipon. Ipon is a, is a uh, word for our small streams. Kobe. 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 Yeah, that includes all the seven LGU tributaries to the uh, watershed in uh, Baroro. So the community-based adaptation, enhance, enhancing climate resilience communities and ecosystems through participatory watershed management have been doing a lot of uh, effects to our LGUs. Okay, next. I just showed you the, the parts of the, uh, the numbers that we have been uh, planting the least four years. We also have protest forest protection program. And I would like to take uh, this opportunity to show that the works of uh, CFNR in our uh, locality, especially the fragmentation models, have been a very good uh, start up for our uh, different uh, programs that concerns the watershed and our environment as a whole. So thank you for, uh, for all these things. And going to the policies, uh, one thing that we experience here is the seemingly unaware, uh, unawareness of the, uh, of the public regarding our land, uh, land classification. So it is uh, good that the former mayor authored this land reclassification ordinance for the municipality of San Gabriel because there were some instances po na may nagpapatayo na o may nagdedevelop na na they went to certain uh, government agencies, DNR or DAR, na they don't even know po na yung uh, minomodify or dinedevelop nila should not be modified after all because they are timberland or uh, forest land. So uh, here in San Gabriel, there's already a reclassification of agricultural, agricultural lands uh, to instill to our, to our public, the people for the non-conversion of agricultural lands which are identified as environmentally critical Areas. Uh, in I think in La Union we are uh, I think just one of the LGUs having this reclassification ordinance for agricultural lands. Also we have Lana. Okay. Okay. Nawala, nawala yung plan. We also <laughs> ayo nangumalayan. We also have the comprehensive zoning ordinance of San Gabriel. Next, the development strategies and the development trust of our LGU. And in our CLUP, uh, we have incorporated some DRR CCA priority programs for the uh, uh, 10 years of the CLUP, uh, CLUP plan. Okay. And we would like also to introduce, uh, I thank uh, former Mayor uh, Mary Jane Ortega for uh, reminding me this. We are now looking into some indigenous cultural heritage that could protect our environment. We call it Laktang in our locality in San Gabriel. They call it Lapat system in Ifugao and Abra and elsewhere of the elsewhere in some indigenous cultural communities. Uh, as we can see here in the box, it's a practice that can save the and preserve some of the areas in our mountain ranges uh, following the death of a of a elder that uh, supposedly 
uh, frequents the place that is uh, considered sacred. So, kung one year po yung sinabing hindi dapat galawin yung area na yon, then it gives uh, it gives time for that uh, particular area to become robust again, parang mag uh, mag regenerate and gaganda po siya. So, uh, we are we are now looking into some uh, areas policies that we could include in our uh, strategy to to preserve our environment. And for our plans, uh, I just share to you this uh, uh, Bukaw Tangadan River Park, which uh, we are proposing we are proposing to become as a protected area. As you can see here on the right, uh, we would like to have this uh, uh, activities which we are learning from UPLB, the CFB approach, the forest conservation, and we would like to have a medicinal plant alley. All these things po, yung naka-plan po yan, uh, is a, our contribution na ma-preserve po yung uh, natin, uh, mga environment natin. And of course, the CLUP included. And indirectly, uh, as uh, Dr. Rex have shown us, uh, maybe it could prevent some diseases coming into our municipality. So, again, manakada kaya po. Thank you.